ongi etorriak izan zaitezte zinemaldira. Eta bereziki, ba, zuzendari berriak aurkezten eta elkarrezketatzen ditugun txoko honetara. Hoy en un café con tenemos la película Chupacabra del director Gregory Kalamitsov. Welcome. How are you? How was yesterday? Um, hello. <laughs> um, it was wonderful. <laughs> It's so important, you know, um, to have a feedback. It it was the first feedback after this three years work. <laughs> yeah, and it's very very important that world premiere is here in San Sebastian. That it, uh, four years ago it was my first international film festival and I was so fascinated that ah, I'm a film director and <laughs> in this big film festival. <laughs> We are very glad to have you here again because in 2018, you participated with this same film in the program called Ikus Mira Berriak, which supports audiovisual projects that come up with the collaboration among Tabacalera International Center for Contemporary Culture, Cinema Lia, and the Elias Quetejecta Film School. How important was that experience to be here today taking part in new directors with your first feature film, Tupacabra? Mm. <laughs> um, actually, it was because uh, Mirabereak was the most important <laughs> time uh, in my professional um, life because um, it was wonderful um, time when you um, think about only your film. You don't think about. Uh, money, problems, weather, <laughs> I don't know. You just uh, talk with people, um, film directors, and very, very different projects. And it you feel that your project is important mm -hmm. <laughs> and you must do it. It's like a very, very deep uh, breath before hard work. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Nice. The film is set at the Russian steppe, such an inhospitable place that causes a great feeling of desolation to tell a story whose main character deals with loneliness and abandonment as well. Why did you choose this topic and this specific spot or place to develop it? Mm, I think it's... Mm, for me it's the main theme <laughs> of life and it's how I feel myself uh, and yeah and uh, especially how I, how I felt myself in my childhood mm -hmm. and um, I decided to uh, shoot the film uh, in my childhood places where I was born uh, it's very strange Um, place where uh, two seas connect, it, uh, the Sea of Azov and the Black Sea, and uh, it's 100 kilometers of step fields, and I noticed that when I shot the film, that this place is, mm, doesn't change for all my life, as I was a kid and one year ago, the same places. And this feeling I tried to convey. Um, yeah. You made it wonderfully. Thanks. The nine-year-old actor, Platon, who stars in Andre, is naturally gifted. But I imagine that there must have been a lot of acting direction yeah, to achieve that interpretation, that is so subtle, sustained over the time, and so stunning by its simplicity. How was the process? <laughs> well, um, firstly, I was very afraid uh, before casting where I could find him, the boy. Uh, I, I thought that it, it's a very big problem, but Platon uh, was 
the third uh, boy in casting. Yeah, thanks for my casting director. <laughs> and I, um, I was afraid that my, uh, that I feel that it's it's he, it's he, um, it's Andre. And we had uh, three months of casting, and I don't know thousands of kids, and I. Uh, every day I remembered about Platon, and finally I said that it must be him. It's it it, it looks he looks like me. Really? And, yeah, and it was my intention to but find myself. Physically speaking, emotionally speaking, is very close to you. In what? In which sense? Um, it's very complicated. I I mean, how he feels this world, how he speaks, how he thinks, mm -hmm. and that he, he, he likes silence, you know, mm -hmm. he's, and, 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 when, and on the one side he is very shy, but on the other side, uh, inside him uh, happens some very big work, I think, and we... Mm, I decided not speak too much about his inner life, okay. and we um, spoke like a bird, you know, we just looking and he feels that, and every time when, uh, at the beginning of the shooting, I tried to say something to him, and he just said that I understand everything, it's okay, and yeah, he feels this character. He really um, lived in this um, script. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, actually, we had uh, just 18 days of shooting, and uh, for the crew, it was very, very hard uh, because K crew, everyone was the uh, debutants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but even um, Platon too, of course. <laughs> but he, I was so fascinated by him that he's so brave that he worked every day. He woke up at four <laughs> at morning and worked, and he he could work uh, tw twelve, ten, twelve hours, and yeah. I w I'm really like I'm very happy that we I found him and we are friends. <laughs> you have an authentic and very inner connection between both of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> when uh, we was shooting the film, um, every day people uh, came to me and uh, uh, tell told me. Uh, uh, you know that oh he looks like you i don't know how <laughs> how <laughs> how you found him and it, and it was the best uh, you know a feedback from the crew that yeah because he's the main i uh, i don't know <laughs> part of the film if we couldn't uh found him the film yeah yeah he's the heart mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, the story that is told can be universal, universal, and it describes real abandonment, but it can also reach the public and make them connect with that inner child, yeah, that we all have and we were speaking about. And that at some point may have felt this way. As a filmmaker, what did you want to contribute to this very human feeling? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh, um. I was interested uh, at the moment, um, you know, when childhood uh, passed away, ends, and uh, new life, a major life, s starting, and yeah, and uh, on the other side, when um, sorry, when something like a religious experience uh, f at the first time happens in the uh, human life. And 
uh, main character, he doesn't understand what what is it, what what's happened with him, with his soul, um, and yeah, it's something that I think is the main thing in the human life. This feeling that you are not alone, that. Um, there is no death, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I, it's like a statement, but I believe that it is true. <laughs> there is an extensive symbolism in the film, the crystals brought by the sea, the distant sheep, the dog, the purifying fire. All these ingredients wrap up the film in a magical halo. Yeah, it's something magical everywhere. What does all this mean to you and where does this production come from? Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, I, for me it's very important to make uh, like this uh, re symbols, reality symbols in film because it's um, it tells um, the most important thing of our life and uh, it, the cinema is the best art to show it in the time, in the place and in this film, because it's film about childhood, um, uh, I used um, symbols of um, like mother, mm -hmm. and, uh, like uh, sea and when um, he uh, uh, swimming in the sea is like uh, you know trying to find his mother because he, he disconnect uh, with his mother and uh, the image of the cave it's like a image of the mother which he he like he likes um, have a time in cave because um, it's like a um, feeling that he, he he is protected, you know, because at his home he is not protected. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, I don't know, the fire. <laughs> mm, it's something that, mm, like a key point when your life uh, changes mm -hmm. and um, will never. Mm, be as Ca catharsis, catharsis. Yes, 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 yes. And in, in his life, it's the, maybe it's the main event of his life, and the fire, of course, it's image of <laughs> the main event. <laughs> <laughs> the ending gives rise to different interpretations. Yeah, which vindication lies behind that, and what final sensation would you like? the public to get? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, for me, uh, when we see a burning house, um, we don't know, and, and I don't know what happened with uh, Andre and what will happen with him after it. And I think it's uh, it's like an information, and I uh, tried to convey uh, the feeling of his uh, future. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, um, he, uh, this image of the sea about a live dog, it's it says that his imagination uh, safe him and that the life <laughs> will be good with him mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know maybe um, yeah maybe the hope is still there mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. him and for everyone mm -hmm. yes yes and uh, I don't know if if he, if he died because I uh, I thought that maybe, maybe he could die mm -hmm. and for me it's not uh, a bad end 
because uh, I uh, show uh, the good feeling in the end, something strange, maybe mystical, mm -hmm. but it's, it's something more that uh, simple reality which he uh, break with, you know, mm -hmm. these people and, and yeah, it's something, something deeper. Spiritual, maybe. Yes, yes, yes. Beyond the religions, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm, fantastic. We need to finish. Uh, thank you for such an interesting interview. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure for us to have you here again. And congratulations. Thank you very much. Ikusi ditzagun orain, Chupacabra izeneko pelikularen trailerra.